Okay, true believers, time for a spectacular series of superior Spider-Man. Women, today we're taking a look at some super cool female versions of Spider-Man. Number 10, Spiderling, also known as Anna Mae Parker. She first appeared in 2015 in Spider-Man's Renew Your Vows storyline as part of the Secret Wars event. She is the daughter of Peter Parker and Mary Jane. When the multiverse is destroyed by incursions and recreated as Battle World, she finds herself living in a domain known as the Regency. This place is dominated by Regent, an evil mastermind on a mission to eliminate all superheroes and steal their powers. Growing up, she develops spider powers of her own, causing her parents to fear that she will one day be hunted. She actually is hunted down later and kidnapped by Venom, who recently escaped from prison. The epic confrontation that follows ends with Spider-Man bringing a burning building crashing down on Venom, presumably killing him. Ooh, ooh, Daddy Spider-Man is protective. Later in life, Anna confronts the villain Mole Man on her own while her parents are busy arguing about their daughter being a superhero. The Parker trio goes on to defeat the villain together and Peter names her Spiderling. She has the same sense of responsibility as Peter, but with Mary Jane's headstrong attitude. Number 9, Spider-Girl. First appearing in one of Marvel's What If storylines, number 7, in 1978. Betty Brant was a newly hired employee at the Daily Bugle. Attending a scientific demonstration with her colleagues, she winds up in the same lab Peter Parker is visiting with his classmates. A radioactive spider drops down and lands on Betty's hand, resulting in her being bit instead of Peter. Concerned for Betty, Peter convinces Jameson to let her take the day off and he invites her out to dinner. Later, the two of them discover Betty has developed spider powers and Pete inspires her to take up crime fighting so he can take some pictures and sell them to the bugle. Jameson, of course, only uses the photos to start a smear campaign about Spider Girl being a menace. The two later fail to stop a burglar who goes on to kill Peter's Uncle Ben. Betty is horrified by this and resolves to abandon her identity as Spider Girl. Hey guys, before I get on to the next one, please take a second to hit that like button. It really helps us out here at Top 10 Nerd. Number 8. Penny Parker. You might recognize her from the Spider-Verse film, but Penny actually made her debut in 2014 in Marvel's Edge of the Spider-Verse number 5. When she was 9 years old, her father died, the original pilot of the 900 pound spider suit. She learns from her Uncle Ben and Aunt May that she's the only one who can take his place and allows herself to be bitten by the radioactive spider that powers half of the suit's CPU. Five years later, Mysterio begins infecting the people of New York with a hallucinogenic gas, and it's Penny who shows up and dispatches him, later working alongside Daredevil. She also later joins the Spider Army, recruited by Peter Porker and Old Man Spider on a subway ride home. Penny is Japanese and a vegetarian. Her superpowered suit pays homage to classic mecha anime, and some of her classmates' names are actually references to popular shows. Number 7, Spider Woman. First appearing in Marvel's Spotlight number 32 in 1977, Jessica Drew grew up in a small cottage with her father, Jonathan Drew. John found uranium in large amounts on the property and went on to build a research facility, performing controversial studies in genetics and cell regeneration. Eventually, little Jessica becomes poisoned from the constant uranium exposure, and John injects her with an untested serum made with the blood of several uncommon species of spiders. And you'll never guess what kind of power she gets. He seals her in a genetic accelerator while she undergoes a transformation, and she stays in stasis for decades. Decades, her aging greatly slowed. Now, as a fully grown woman with hardly any life experience, she wastes no time getting into trouble. Her first romance ends in tragedy when she accidentally kills her boyfriend and later is manipulated by Mentalo into joining Hydra. Hoping to mold her into an assassin, sends her off to assassinate Nick Fury. She refuses and fights back against her masters, eventually escaping and starting a new life as a friendly neighborhood bounty hunter, Spider Woman. She later finds herself dubbed the Dark Angel of San Francisco, swinging around the city and solving crimes just like the real Spidey. Number 6, Spider Gwen. Raised by George Stacy alone after her mother died, her free spirit and creativity often clashed with her father's rigid attitude. She became friends with Peter Parker and formed a band with her classmates known as the Mary Janes. After being bitten by a genetically engineered spider, she gained spider powers and became known as Spider Woman. Peter Parker, desperate to be like his idol Spider Woman, conducts an experiment on himself that turns him into a monstrous lizard-like beast and Gwen winds up beating the snot out of him, resulting in his death. This leaves her branded a criminal by the city and the guilt of Peter's death hangs heavy over her head. She doubles her efforts to fight crime, eventually having her identity uncovered by her father. 
At one point, she travels to another universe and meets a version of Peter Parker that became the Goblin, overwhelmed by rage at not being able to save his universe's version of Gwen Stacy. She attempts to recruit him into the Spider Army, but he refuses. Later, when she reveals that she's actually an alternate Gwen Stacy, he sacrifices himself to save her like he wishes he could have in his own dimension. Number 5. Sil First appearing in Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 3 in 2014, Cindy Moon was born with an eidetic memory. At a scientific demonstration, the radioactive spider that gave Peter Parker his powers also bit her in the ankle. The first use of her powers was actually when she got home and accidentally webbed up her parents. She is then taken away by Ezekiel Sims, who locks her away to protect her from Morlun, the devourer of totems. He's on an interdimensional mission to basically kill every single version of Spider-Man. Good luck, am I right? So yeah, she's locked away in this tower with a whole bunch of books and tapes and stuff, and she stays there willingly to keep herself safe. Spider-Man finds out about this at some point, and he comes along to rescue her. She improvises a sweet costume made of webs, and the two immediately begin an intimate relationship. You can only imagine what a mess that would make. They make a pretty good team though, and later go up against Electro together. She once even saved Spider-Man from being unmasked by the Black Cat on live television. Number 4. May Parker May is the daughter of Mary Jane and Peter in a future alternate universe. She first appeared in What If Volume 2, number 105. When Peter Parker loses a leg in an intense battle against Green Goblin, Spidey decides to focus more on being a father and decides to keep his past from his daughter. Unfortunately, she develops her own spider powers similar to his at the age of 15. She has a few adventures of her own before her parents discover her dual identity, but Pete and Mary Jane are supportive of her crime fighting passion. She later goes on to help S.H.I.E.L.D. battle against Carnage, and once encounters a clone of herself. She later assists the Web Warriors and the Superior Spider Army. Number 3. Spider Bitch First appearing in Wolverine Volume 3, number 67, in 2008, she is technically Peter Parker's granddaughter, with her parents being Hawkeye and Tonya Parker. She's super badass, and I love her costume. She is from a future alternate reality where Kingpin rules over Hammer Falls, a future version of Las Vegas. She gathers up a team of heroes and attempts to take control of the area, but ends up being captured by Kingpin and set to be executed. Her father, Hawkeye, helps her to break free and is shocked when she ends up killing Kingpin in her rage and then attempts to kill Papa Hawkeye as well. She eventually embraces her legacy and becomes Spider-Girl, later recruited by Superior Spider-Man into the Spider-Army. She ultimately survives in the end and returns to her home dimension. Number 2. Lady Spider Appearing in Spider-Verse No. 1 in 2014, May Riley's father kept numerous animals in his study, including a spider. One day, May opened up the cage, believing the spider to be upset about being held captive, and she got bit. It was actually just a normal spider. Later on in life, her father dies and she builds a super suit with mechanical arms and mechanical web shooters, becoming the Lady Spider. She has three university degrees and is the only female student in her field. She first used her suit to rescue the mayor from Electro, and when the six men of the Sinistry arrive, led by Green Goblin, she holds them off, forcing them to retreat. And now number one, Spider-Man. In Marvel's What If number 23, released in 1980, we meet the amazing Spider-Man, also known as Aunt May. When her nephew Peter Parker forgets his lunch at home, a concerned May Parker rushes off to a science demonstration to make sure he gets it. He's a growing boy. There, she is bitten by a radioactive spider which gave her spider powers. I'm serious. May first uses her power to earn some money for her family doing stunts, but later defeats the villain Leapfrog and becomes a real crime fighter. When the master weaver Karn shows up in her universe on his relentless hunt to kill anyone who possesses spider powers, she heroically surrenders herself to save her family. Also known as Spider Lady, or sometimes just Granny, May is later recruited into the Spider Army during the Spider Geddon event to battle against the Inheritors on the Marvel Prime Universe. In the end, the evil Inheritors are defeated by transferring their consciousness into infant human babies, which May actually adopts and takes back to her universe. Truly your friendly neighborhood aunt. Alright Nerd Squad, who's your favorite female Spider-Man? Let us know in the comments below. And before I go, let's take a look at some comments from our previous video, Top 10 Newest Marvel Comics Heroes. Fish Bob says, I think y'all forgot Snowflake and Safe Space. 
triggered, we, we didn't forget them. Michael L says, top 10 nerd dance off request. Hey man, I'm totally down for that if we can dance to the Spider-Verse soundtrack. I think Taylor McWaters might surprise you guys. Chris Bradley says, Taylor McWaters and Patrick Day are awesome hosting the show together. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome and I always look forward to reading your comments and suggestions. So keep them coming. I'm Patty D. This is Top 10 Nerd. Thank you for watching.